Chapter 15 Review We added a couple new neurotransmitters and neurotransmitter receptors in this chapter. There's also a long list of different effects of the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems on the target organs. Luckily, these effects are usually the opposite of one another, and so you only need to memorize one half. One of the big concepts in this chapter was the idea of autonomic tone. This was similar to muscle tone, meaning that even when we consider a neuron at rest, it's still firing some action potentials, and we can increase or decrease that frequency. The preganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system exit the spinal column along the thoracic and lumbar regions and synapse just a short distance away on the sympathetic chain ganglia. Here they release acetylcholine, which binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the postganglionic neurons, which connect to the target organs and typically release norepinephrine. The preganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system exit the brainstem and sacral areas of the spinal cord and connect to distant ganglia. Here they release acetylcholine, which binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the postganglionic cells. These cells connect to the target organs and typically release acetylcholine, which can bind to muscarinic acetylcholine receptors on the targets. Because both ganglia contain nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, the effects of nicotine will depend on what the autonomic tone is at the time. In the morning, when we are relaxed, parasympathetic tone should be dominant. Therefore, the parasympathetic ganglia will already be at high activity, and nicotine will have little effect on them. However, nicotine can activate the sympathetic ganglia, which will increase sympathetic tone, leading to a rush. On the other hand, in the afternoon, when people are stressed out, sympathetic tone may be dominant. Therefore, a dose of nicotine will have little effect on the sympathetic ganglia, but it will activate the parasympathetic ganglia, leading to an increase in parasympathetic tone. We did say that sympathetic was dominant over parasympathetic when both are active at the same time. And that's true. However, Sympathetic tone will be even higher if only the sympathetic nervous system is active. Just like the temperature of the shower will be even hotter if you only have the hot water tap turned up, not both the hot and the cold at the same time. For this reason, if we were to cut the parasympathetic fibers of the vagal nerve, this would remove parasympathetic tone from the heart and speed up a dangerously low heart rate in a patient. Similar to the way that acetylcholine receptors came in the nicotinic and muscarinic varieties, adrenergic receptors come in different alpha and beta varieties. Epinephrine and norepinephrine can activate both of these, causing bronchodilation and increased heart rate, for instance. However, it's possible to design drugs that preferentially bind to one type or another. For instance, we discussed beta blockers, which are drugs that bind to the beta adrenergic receptors on the heart and prevent them from firing, thus lowering heart rate by decreasing sympathetic tone. Asthma medications, on the other hand, typically activate the alpha variety found in the lungs, triggering bronchodilation, without having similar effects on the heart. When somebody is going into anaphylactic shock, we do not worry about specificity and instead use an epinephrine autoinjector to deliver the strongest medication to the whole body, leading to both bronchodilation and increased heart rate. The increased heart rate is not a side effect that somebody with asthma would want to experience every time they use their inhaler. The bladder responds to both sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation. In response to sympathetic tone, it relaxes, allowing it to fill up with urine. With parasympathetic stimulation, the bladder will contract, which promotes urination. 
Therefore, if your patients are nervous at the hospital and have more sympathetic tone, it will be difficult for them to give a urine sample because their bladder remains relaxed. Sometimes, when people are scared, rather than go into a fight or flight response, they may go into what is called a vasovagal reflex. Many animals do this rather than fleeing, they simply pass out, and some humans will have this response in similar situations. That means when a person is really scared, they may actually have an increase in parasympathetic tone, which could cause them to pee their pants. Remember, the vagal nerve was cranial nerve 10 and had the most parasympathetic fibers leaving the central nervous system. A large amount of blood flows to the brain up the carotid arteries. Found here are carotid bodies which contain baroreceptors. These same receptors can be found in the aorta and they detect blood pressure. If we sit up too quickly, Gravity pulls blood downwards and blood pressure in these areas drops. This information is sent up to the medulla oblongata, which should trigger activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which will increase heart rate, which should bring blood pressure back up. This is called the baroreceptor reflex or the baroreflex. Conversely, if blood pressure is normal, and we push on these carotid bodies, they will detect an increase in pressure, sending a warning signal to the brain, which activates the parasympathetic system, which will decrease heart rate and blood pressure. If it drops enough, the person may pass out, and we might call this a sleeper hold. It's important to note the difference between activation of sympathetic neurons which typically release norepinephrine onto a target organ versus the release of epinephrine into the bloodstream by the adrenal glands, which activate almost all target organs. We can have very specific sympathetic responses when needed. For instance, we could cause the pupils to dilate when it's dark out without increasing heart rate by activating the sympathetic neurons that lead to the eye, but nowhere else. The parasympathetic system does not get its own hormone. There just aren't any emergencies that would warrant a body-wide relaxing response that were to last for half an hour or so, the way that we do with the sympathetic response and epinephrine in the bloodstream.